Thank you to the people who are supporting me on Kofi. You guys are keeping me alive. Your life had not been perfect. Since childhood, you felt like you were running every day. Be it from day-to-day -day stress or your own emotions. He knew this was unhealthy, but there seemed to be no chance of fixing this. Even extensive therapy only led to your diagnosis and nothing else. On top of that, as a coping mechanism, you had mentally devolved back into a child. This created a downward spiral, as the wider public simply could not accept that. You were an adult puppet. The felt of which you were made of was a pleasant pastel pink, with long pink fluffy strands of hair coming out of your head. The inside of your mouth was red, with a blue tongue. And your nose was bulbous and red. Black star shapes were around your eyes, and your hands looked like big silly cartoon gloves. Your name was equally silly. Tootsie Van Jellenheimer III. While you certainly looked like a clown, your disposition wasn't. So when you got the chance to leave everything behind, to live in a small village named Home on a secluded island, that was a chance you instantly took. The anticipation alone had kept you up for a handful of days before finally the moment of truth came. But you were too tired. Really was your own fault for staying up all the time. Yet somehow you still managed to get on that plane. Sadly, by the time the plane landed near the island's docks, you were still fully asleep. One of the townsfolk, a handsome puppet man, approached your sleeping form. And he sighed. His name was Wally Darling, and he was a painter by trade and the village's mayor. Or a sort of mayor. His name was Wally Darling, and he was a painter by trade. He was the village's quasi-mayor, though in reality the little town had no leader. But since everybody respected Wally so much, he was the leader in spirit. And he had planned for a special celebration for you, the new arrival. To wake you up for it. So for this very first night, he simply opted to gently lift you out of the plane and carry you to his home. The other neighbors already had collected some sticks for a bonfire and shiny apples for the party, so it wasn't as if the entire night was ruined by your absence. He laid you down onto his hoft bed on the second floor of his house before turning to the others. And when the morning light shined in through the windows, you slowly awoke. Confused by your surroundings, but you weren't sleep drunk enough to not make the connection that you were now inside of someone else's home. You looked around yourself. The house was certainly big, not so much you could tell. And the bedroom had a few essentials, Two chairs, a dresser, a table. The house creaked and groaned, as if it was alive. Or abandoned. Yet it looked quite modern. Hmm. You know, when your house was finished, it wasn't going to end like this. And that was when you noticed another puppet sleeping on the floor, next to you on a tiny sleeping bag. You blinked. Oh wait, that was the cute guy whom you had talked to to get your ticket to the neighborhood. You sighed in relief. At least you awoke next to someone you knew. You patiently waited for the puppet man to awaken, before the two of you had breakfast together while doing some small talk. The next few days were strange. It had begun with you choosing a spot for your future house, and until it was constructed, you'd live in a small rented tent from Wally. 
Sure, the sounded inconvenient, but he promised the building would be finished in just a few days. Especially with your help. Of course, it would then be without furniture. But that you could purchase at the local store run by a caterpillar puppet named Howdy Pillar. You spent these days exploring your new surroundings when you weren't building, socializing with the other neighbors. In a way, these few days were like your life back home, just focused on a different activity. But it was different enough, in a good way too. You didn't feel on edge at all, and despite your body hurting every night from the constant running and manual labor, you closed your eyes with a smile every time. A huge reason for that was the painter, Wally. He was so loving, so caring. You were not used to that. At first it felt alien, and your cautious nature made it difficult to accept any praise that he was giving you, but he was giving you praise nonetheless. Quickly your daily goal became seeing him smile at you just once for doing a good job. It wasn't devotion that you felt, it was love. You wrestled with this feeling until the day your house had been finished. A cozy little cottage with a pink roof. You admired the fruits of your work before looking over at the painter. He was smiling at you. What now? you asked excitedly. Wally thought for a moment. Hmm. That noise. That noise. He often did it when he didn't have any immediate answer ready. Well, the cleanup is done. You bit your lower lip. Hmm. I guess, for now, do what you want. That shocked you. Why did it shock you? Uh... You exhaled, and then forced a smile. Nice. You never were in a situation like this before. Sure, this is why you came here for this do-what-you-want moment. And Wally tilted his head. You seem sad. Did I say something wrong? You shook your head and looked away. No, I'm fine. He took a step closer. What's wrong? Quietly you stood there, unsure of what to say. I want to keep working. Wally chuckled. <laughs> but wasn't the point of this to not work anymore? You turned around and looked into his kind eyes. I love you. Wally felt his eyes widen, more of reflex than anything else. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I love you too. Sheepishly, you closed your eyes and smiled to hide the wealth of emotions that you were feeling right now deep inside of you. <sighs> Not like that, you said. He kept his eyes closed, but his heart began to beat faster. More than that, you said. All this time I wanted to make you proud. I wanted you to love me the same way I do. He sighed and your heart stopped for a moment. <sighs> I understand, but there are a few issues with your wish. His tone was serious, but not lecturing. You were relieved he understood what you meant, however. As of right now, you are a business partner, and I'd hate to lose that. Dejected, your shoulders slumped. He scratched the back of his head. Yet, 
there are indeed a few positives that we could gather from this, and why I'm so unsure, and I, I, I mostly just want you to understand that this topic is complex. You huffed. He talked like he was an old wise man and you were a mere child. You felt a little infantilized. I'm not a child, you said defensively, even though you still felt like one. He smiled. <laughs> I know why you came into this neighborhood. You blinked but didn't reply. And I understand what you see in me and what you want from me. And I also can see why you think I can give you those things. He smiled the action alone, hurting him. In truth, Wally right now wanted nothing more than to embrace you. To taste your lips. <sighs> For one, while I understand your problems and issues, I completely lack any understanding on how you feel. It's difficult for me to decipher these things. I hope you understand. You fidgeted. There are other things about me, but you better not talk about the sentience of his house. You are telling me these things in the hope that I say no, don't you? Internally he shook his head, but he was also glad that you interrupted him. And now what he wanted to say was nothing but, no, I'm telling you these things so you know what you may will get yourself into. However, his mouth disobeyed him, and what he actually said was, I'm not sure. I want you to hold me, you said, not giving him a chance to create another argument. And he exhaled in response. I want you to tell me that you're proud of me. I want you to kiss me. I want you to... I want to wake up next to you. Wally didn't reply with words, but with actions, as the puppet took a simple step forward. He was now so close to you, you could feel the heat radiating off of him. His shallow breaths tickled over your head as he towered over you. After all, he was at least a foot taller than you. And then, his big, long arms snaked around you. Wally's body was borderline fluffy. Sophie felt hot, yet also so squishy and soft. Your hands buried into his felt. Uh, that tickles. He chuckled. After a minute you retreated one of them and gently took his left wrist, guiding his hand further down to your butt. Once in position you purred. Wally huffed one last time before giving in to his instincts as he squeezed your soft cheek with his hand. A pleased moan escaped you at the slight pain. You could feel his heartbeat through his shirt. You felt great that you knew that he was enjoying this just as much as you did. I'm sorry you had such a hard life, he said eventually. But I will do my best to mend your pain, as long as you want me. Wally retreated from his bear hug for a moment to look into your eyes. Just do me a favor. You nodded. If you really want this relationship, don't call me daddy. I really don't like that. You chuckled loudly. <laughs> I promise I won't. You said as you once again threw yourself at him. But only if you start calling me pumpkin. He sighed. <laughs> Can do that. Then you slowly pushed him towards your house. Let's celebrate my finished home properly, 
shall we? Once again, Wally Darling huffed. <laughs> Don't start complaining if I break your bed. And with those words, the two of you vanished behind your house's doors. <laughs>